Um, so today I'm going to share with you an update on my role and my work plan um, and how I think uh, research can fit in with the OCV working group. Oh, where's this one? Okay. Um, I think most people here know what the country support platform is. Um, but I just thought I'd give a recap in case anyone doesn't. Um, so this is essentially the operational arm of the GTFCC, um, and it was established, or at least the idea came about in um, the GTFCC annual meeting in 2019. Um, the CSP is hosted at the um, Federation of the Red Cross in Geneva, um, and it's in the health and care department. Um, and I just wanted to show this organizational chart of the team because um, it can sometimes be a bit confusing about where my role sits within the CSP and how it connects with the GTFCC secretariat. Um, so the CSP coordination team um, sits primarily in Geneva, although some of the positions, as you can see here, um, are actually not in Geneva. Um, but I'm part of the core coordination um, team. Uh, my role is funded by the Wellcome Trust and I'm based at the British Red Cross in London, um, but seconded to IFRC in Geneva. So it's a little bit confusing, but essentially I work closely with the CSP coordination group and also really closely with the CSP program managers that are based in country. Um, and then I've also got this dotted line to the GTFCC secretariat. Um, and this is just to show that I work um, very closely again with the with the secretariat and essentially a kind of um, an extended member of the, the team there. Um, and so that's why I'm part of the, the working group and I'm actually part of all of the technical working groups. And just to recap on the countries that the CSP um, currently has program managers based in, um, I think we all know these already, but they're the D DRC, Zambia, Bangladesh, Nigeria, and Mozambique. Um, but I just wanted to flag here that uh, the CSP support is not specific for these countries. Um, so although we have program managers based there, uh, it doesn't mean we can't provide technical support to other countries. Um, and that's also true for my role and for research in general. So, um, you know, if you're based in a country that where we, we don't currently have um, a program manager, um, please still reach out to me if you've got any research related um, questions. Um, I just wanted to show a bit of a timeline because whilst this is a new position um, and it's essentially a new work stream for the GTFCC, research is not um, a new thing for the GTFCC. Um, and so initially uh, it was recognized that um, we need more consensus around uh, cholera research and priorities um, in the 2018 uh, GTFCC annual meeting. Um, and as a result of that, there was um, an exercise led by the Wellcome Trust and other GTFCC partners um, to look at how to prioritize um, cholera related research. Um, and this was published in 2021, along with the research tracker, which I'm going to share with you today. Um, also, in in that during that period, the the country support platform was developed, which I've already mentioned. Um, and so, my role um, kind of came on the back of this work that that was already happening, um, due to the recognition that um, it would be helpful to have um, a focal person to really, um, you know, kind of lead the way with this this research. Um, work um, and make sure that uh, you know we were kind of considering it in all of the all of the working groups for the GTFCC. Um, and just to say that my role is currently funded for three years, so I'll be around for a while. So <laughs> be coming to lots of these meetings. Um, I really just wanted to start by um, kind of a general slide about research and evidence. And these definitions are not by any means um, concrete. They're, they're fairly vague. Um, and that was done intentionally because I think, um, you know, there are lots of blurred lines around um, what we mean by research in general. Um, so I've also included the word evidence in case that's something that, you know, people are more comfortable with. Um, Sometimes when we talk about research, people switch off because they just think about, you know, traditional lab based researchers in academic institutions um, doing these really long in-depth studies um, that we can use the findings from, but are not not something that we really need to think about. Um, but I also wanted to flag here um, that when we talk about research and evidence, we actually also mean operational research. Um, and again, this is something that I just wanted to spend a bit more time um, kind of talking about because operational research, if I was to ask everyone in this room to write down what you think of as operational research, I think 
every single person would write something different. Um, and this is something that I think we should be talking about a bit more. Um, it can be quite broad. It doesn't need to necessarily be carried out by um, academic researchers. Um, it should be more integrated into programs, um, into decision making. Um, and yeah, essentially it can be you know, a huge number of things. And we've already heard operational research ideas come up um, multiple times throughout this meeting. And I think that just goes to show one, how important we think operational research is, but also the kind of the broad definition of, in, in terms of like our understanding of operational research, because I've made lots of notes during the meeting. And if I was to just go through all of the examples where someone said we should do operational research on that, that it's a huge variety of things. Um, but I just wanted to kind of reassure people that when when I'm talking about research, um, I'm talking about it in, in the broad kind of sense. And I don't just mean um, the these academic um, research studies um, that we had some of the findings pr presented from um, earlier in the meeting. Um, so just to give kind of a, a top level overview of what my role um, involves. Um, so it has kind of a, a scope which crosses both the global level um, and the country level. Um, and that partly informs the thinking of having me base both within the CSP and as part of the GTFCC Secretariat. Um, so at the global level, some of this work, as I mentioned, um, with the timeline has already started. Um, so this is basically taking responsibility for the cholera research agenda, reviewing it, updating it, making sure it still, you know, fits um, the kind of main priorities that, that we're thinking about addressing. Um, it's also looking at tracking cholera research. Um, so we're aware that there is a lot of cholera research happening that the GTFCC don't know anything about. Um, so one of my first uh, first steps really in, in trying to get a grip of this uh, this cholera research world is just trying to understand what research is, is out there already, um, what's happening, um, and just to kind of, you know, check the state of play um, where we're starting from. Um, it's also um, engaging with kind of all of the um, relevant stakeholders. And again, this is not just researchers. This is people who use research as well um, and people who fund research. It's a huge number of different types of actors. Um, we want to improve knowledge sharing um, at the global level. You'll see this is also in the well, many of the points are very similar at the country level. Um, and um, yeah, I've already gone through research donors um, and just then specifically for the countries. Um, although we've got the global research agenda, um, we recognize that in some countries there may be other research priorities that are specific to those country settings. Um, and we want to be able to support the countries in identifying what those research gaps are um, and then you know, developing studies to enable them to address some of those research questions. Um, again, operational research support, and this is something that I've already flagged, but um, you know, providing technical support to enable the countries to do more operational research is a really important component of this role. Um, and then connecting national and international researchers. Um, so we know that there is research happening in countries. We also know that there's lots of research happening elsewhere. Um, and many of those researchers would like to collaborate. So providing opportunities for them to share their research findings um, and also to make connections so that they can better work together. Um, again, knowledge sharing at country level um, and also looking at national um, donor engagement. So not just focusing on bringing, you know, money in from the big kind of um, well-known research funders, but also looking at other pathways for funding uh, research. Um, I don't think this is something that I need to spend too much time on, but this is just essentially, you know, a slide to show why we're interested in research. Um, but I do think it's it's poignant for this meeting in particular because we have a vaccine that we've been using for the last 10 years as we've just celebrated. But the meeting starting from Tuesday where we had the science day, you know, all the way through today, um, it keeps coming up that we don't know how to use the vaccine well. Um, and that's why we need research. And if we had have been doing this research all along, we would have 10 years worth of data on that, which would be really, really useful. Um, and just hearing some of the examples of the, the new generation of vaccines that are coming in four to five years, when we get those vaccines, it's really important that we know how to use them most effectively. And if we don't start doing the research to understand how to target the vaccination now, um, then 
you know, will kind of be in a similar position where looking at mass vaccination programs that are not necessarily the most cost effective. Um, obviously, some of the vaccines will work differently. So I understand that there will be different strategies. But just in general, um, you know, looking at um, exposure to disease, uh, vulnerable groups, these kind of things that are more general um, that you would be able to um, utilize with the new vaccines as well. Um, so I'm just going to give a bit of an update on the uh, cholera research agenda. Um, I'm sure that many of you will have been involved in this process and potentially know um, a lot more about it than I do because I only joined in June. Um, but I just wanted to present um, the vaccine related cholera research priorities that were identified. Um, so this table essentially just shows the um, the people that took part in in this work and contributed to to coming up with this uh, cholera research agenda. Um, so I just wanted to recognise um, you know the proportion of of people that came uh, that contributed that had um, expertise in OCV and immunisation. So it was around twenty five percent, and there were one hundred and seventy seven experts in total um, that were engaged in this research. Um, so these were the uh, research priorities identified that were vaccine related. Um, and this is part of the top 20 research priorities that were identified for the cholera research roadmap. Um, and as you can see, there are 10 vaccine related research questions listed here out of a total of 20. And that's across four technical pillars. Um, so I think it's quite clear from this exercise that um, there's a lot of interest in vaccine research and that there are a lot of unanswered questions. Um, I guess I wanted to highlight a few things around this just from, you know, kind of what I've learned and what I've been thinking about since starting the role uh, a few months ago. Um, so one of the things just to flag is that um, most of these questions are implementation or operational research questions. Um, and what that means is the the activities that are needed um, in order to address some of these research questions are already happening. Um, so you're already using the vaccine in many countries with different settings, different targeting strategies, um, different approaches, different times related to, you know, like when you gave the vaccine um, after the outbreak was declared. So you're already collecting the data and doing the work to enable you to answer these questions. Um, so really, it's just a question of how we utilize that data um, in order to be able to you know, address um, some of these, these research areas. Um, so one thing that when I've been speaking to, to different people about research in cholera and trying to understand, like, why haven't we been answering these questions already or, or why there just isn't much um, cholera research happening. Um, and there are lots of different reasons. So resource constraints, capacity constraints, um, you know, challenge, technical challenges around developing protocols and methodology. Um, but one thing that I will say is that every single person that I've spoken to, whether they be, um, you know, country level, um, policy related people, um, donors, uh, researchers, uh, people that are part of the working group, is that everyone seems to really appreciate the value of research and everyone would like to have this evidence. Um, so I guess my role is really trying to understand how we get from wanting the evidence and seeing the value and actually having the evidence and being able to use it. Um, and I think for me, um, I just wanted to kind of, um, I guess, iterate that, it's everyone's responsibility to be involved in those conversations and to be able to move it forward. And so if if part of the challenge is funding, it's bringing, um, you know, donors in to um, speak to, to those who want to do the research and have the capacity to do it um, and trying to find out what the most suitable funding mecha mechanism would be for um, doing that research. If there are technical challenges, it's, you know, bringing in those people that do have the technical expertise uh, and can provide that support to the countries. Um, but yeah, it's essentially, I suppose, my role to coordinate and facilitate those those discussions. And that's what I'll be um, I'll be doing. I just also wanted to mention the, the cholera research tracker, which, again, was something that was um, published on the GTFCC website in 2021. Um, so it's been around for about two and a half years now. Um, at the moment, we only have around just over 60 projects registered on here, and most of those projects were input uh, during that initial period um, when it was originally published. Um, 
this is something that we want to use as an advocacy tool to show what research is happening. Um, we also want to use it to connect researchers with other researchers who might want to, you know, work together going forward. Um, it it would be a great place for people to be able to go to to find out about, um, you know, the answers to questions that they may have, or if the the answer doesn't exist yet, just to just know that there's ongoing research that's being done to try to answer it and, you know, to come back when um, that study has been finished. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show it here to say that um, if you are aware of any research studies that are happening in your countries, um, you can register them on this platform. It's available on, on the GTFCC website. Um, you can use it in English or French. Um, and yeah, it would be great to try and get more uh, pro research projects registered here so that we can make the best use of it. Um, and yeah, why were these tools developed? So again, I think I've mentioned a lot of this. So it's to advocate for the value of research um, to all different communities. Uh, the link's there also if, for you to register your um, uh, your projects. But, um, you know, as I've mentioned, there are lots of different actors that are interested in research, um, from researchers to donors, po uh, national policymakers and, and implementers. Um, and these tools will help us to advocate for um, the value of research, but also they're there to help you to advocate for the value of research in your countries. Um, and the, they're more useful um, with the more data that they have in them. So if we can get more projects registered, that would be great. Um, so I just wanted to finish with a kind of a look forward, um, hopefully something a bit more optimistic. Um, so uh, what would our vision be for, for the future? So um, we'd like to see that research priorities that I, are identified at the country or global level lead to research studies that answer those questions, um, that the knowledge that is generated is translated into a format that can be easily used uh, by policymakers or um, implementers, and then that the guidance that's developed as a result is implemented in the field. Um, and also to have a culture that when people are working on um, program implementation, that they're thinking about any challenges they come up against that they don't have the answers to, that they feed that those back in um, so that we can kind of have this continual cycle of understanding what research is needed and being able to address it. Um, one of the things that's been mentioned during the meetings uh, this week is um, that the use of the word research is not very uh, well liked. Um, so I just wanted to replace it, um, you know, just in case this might have more meaning for some people. I know terminology can be really important. And if research is something that, um, you know, in particular funders or um, whoever you're talking to uh, kind of not open to hearing about, um, then I've just replaced it with some other terms and, and we can be adaptable. Um, it's essentially just the, the generation of evidence uh, to influence policy and decision making. Um, I also wanted to just mention that um, the CSP research support is not a dedicated uh, technical pillar. Um, for the GTFCC, it crosses all of the uh, the technical working groups. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because it's relevant for all of the, the technical areas, but also there's huge amounts of crossover in research as with you know other aspects of cholera control. Um, but just to give an example, I was at the case management meeting a couple of weeks ago, and one of the questions that they were looking to address with research is um, mortality and who is more vulnerable um, to mortality from cholera. And one of the questions that we have in the vaccine um, uh, research priorities is the effect of vaccination on mortality rates. And so those are two questions really that that rely on each other in order to answer. So to answer the vaccination question, you need to know the baseline mortality rates. And it's similar with surveillance. We've had lots of examples from Elizabeth throughout the meeting about work that the surveillance group are doing and how that you know can feed into OCV. And I think that's really, really important to remember with research um, that it, it's, it's not looking at um, kind of very specific uh, technical areas. Um, so I just wanted to finish by um, a slide with what, what I'm actually doing at the moment and how I'm going to try and make this happen, because it's quite a new area of work. 
Um, and I think it's it's one that's going to uh, kind of be adapted um, as we go along. And I really want the contributions of you know people um, in countries in the working groups to you know to make sure that what we're doing is is providing um, the best support that we can with this work. Um, so that's why I'm starting with essentially just looking at how things currently are. Um, so we'll be doing an overview of the existing research that exists and that's ongoing at both global and country level. Also identifying key stakeholders to engage on this uh, area of work. Um, so obviously I'm only one person, <laughs> I work with lots of other people, um, but it will be great for those that are interested in research um, to be part of a, a kind of a GTFCC research network. And that's something that we'll be putting together um, so that we can all work together on this. Um, I think we're much more likely to achieve um, progress uh, with many of us working alongside each other. Um, I also want to look at how research and evidence is currently being incorporated into the NCPs. Um, most of the NCPs do have an operational research or at least some kind of monitoring and evaluation um, component. Um, so I just want to understand, first of all, how that works in practice. Um, and then, you know, how could we improve that that component of the NCPs? Um, so, yeah, for once we we've got the kind of state of play, current state of play, uh, then we'll be looking to move forward and think about how we can do things better. So I will finish there. I just also wanted to mention this. Um, so there's a conference happening, a public health conference in Africa in November, um, and the team from Zambia have um, put in a proposal for a cholera side event, which has been approved. Um, it's not been announced yet, but I just wanted to flag it here so that anyone that would be interested in uh, attending that event in Lusaka, um, it's on the 27th of November, um, just to save the date, because uh, we will be having... Um, a few panel discussions related to cholera at that uh, that event and that's it from me